Well, many people view forced marriage as a human rights abuse, and the British and Australian governments are now considering whether to make it a crime with a potential prison sentence. So it is pretty disappointing to have to tell you that while some countries do fight this practice, others find it an almost overwhelming challenge. In Afghanistan, Human Rights Watch says up to 80% of marriages are forced, not planned, but forced. In 2011, more than half of the cases the British Foreign Office dealt with were connected to families in Pakistan. And Chad has one of the highest rates of forced marriage in Africa. More than 70%. Well, it's a super sensitive issue, not least because it stirs up cultural and family loyalties. So would outlawing forced marriage help its victims or drive them underground? Well, UK Labour Party councillor and author Samim Ali was forced into marriage at the age of 13. But she disagrees with the British government's proposal to criminalise the practice. So she joins us live from Manchester, England tonight. And here with me in our London studios, Sonny Hundle, who writes about identity politics for his blog, Liberal Conspiracy. Um, Samim, let me start with you very briefly. You speak from experience. Just remind our viewers what happened to you. Um, can I just say that um that forced marriage doesn't happen overnight. Um, I was taken out of school at the age of 12. Um, I was taken to Pakistan by my mother and I was forced into a marriage over in Pakistan at the age of 13. Um, I was kept there until I got pregnant and I was then brought back to England um, 14 and pregnant. Um, I gave birth to a baby in, um, in this country and nobody asked any questions, nobody batted an eyelid. Mm. Um, I eventually escaped that marriage at the age of 18, knowing that I didn't have to point the finger at my mother who, who forced me into marriage. Oh. Um, and that's um, my story in a nutshell, so actually. Mean, but, you know, you it, though it disagree. was horrendous. Sorry, my love. You, you, though, disagree with the British government's proposal to criminalise a practice uh, that effectively preys on kids as young as five. Why? And because um, the only reasoning that I've heard about um, criminalising the um, um, forced marriage in, in its entirety is, is to send a, a message to the community. But I'm the victim of a forced marriage. I'm speaking from the victim's point of view. If you criminalise forced marriage, then it's going to go underground even more. And it will, it will deter victims from coming forward. Sunny. You know, um, I, I have worked in schools. I've worked with young people in Manchester and um, around the country mm. and they've all told me that if they had to point the finger at their parents and we've got to remember right. this we have to remember that it is the parents that that force these young people into marriage I don't wanna, yeah. I they don't will not point the finger Sonny. at Let's their parents. Bring Sonny in, Sonny. Yeah, no, I agree with that point, but I do think it is right to criminalise it, and there's various reasons. Firstly, the bill that we had passed in 2007 was inadequate. For example, c uh, victims could not sue for financial compensation. It was also uh, not actually made a big deal about it, so no one knows half the community. Can I just people say don't that the know that the bill exists. Marriage Hold on. Already Go on, Sonny. Yeah, so, so firstly, that's a problem. If you're going to try and make this a big stigma within the Asian community, which actually needs to happen then you have to make a big song and dance about it so that's not been done at all then on top of that for example the guidelines of the forced marriage unit that you refer to they are not also set in stone right. so they can be ignored so there is a huge problem within the community and the problem is the law which was passed in 2007 has done nothing to deal with it so if you don't criminalize this I mean, what do you do it has it has done a lot actually you know the forced marriage protection orders came into play and and slowly but surely the victims have started using them and they know that there is help out there for them you know um five years ago ten years ago there wasn't anything in place for the victims and for you know potential um, um victims of forced marriage that's and I now agree, there but, is and but, but you agree that at least things are not moving that quickly it's though. being used 
No, you, 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 and you're it's too you're early and to actually say that we hold, need... Hold on, no, no, you're right, force you're right, but it's the, the problem is that actually things are not moving that quickly enough and not enough people even know that this law exists. Now, this is a civil remedies law, so actually you cannot criminalise well, it. So, education so what and happens? awareness needs to happen. So education and awareness needs to happen before we actually even start thinking about criminalising um, forced marriage in so let, let, Let's only have his say. Hold, hold on for one second. Yeah, no, so I accept that education needs to happen, but the problem is that within the communities, the people who need to know that there, there is act, active law against forced marriage are not aware themselves, so they think they can get away with it, which is why you need something stronger is right there, now. Is this it's a generational thing, do you think? Yeah, As we move ahead, will things change? It definitely Sunny. will. So they definitely will change. So there was a, a, a poll recently done by the BBC on attitudes with young Asians, and the vast majority, up to 92%, said that forced marriage is wrong. And you will see that if that was an older generation, that would be about 50-50. So I think definitely attitudes have changed. But A, they're not moving quickly enough, and B, you still have lots of women who are being forced into marriages. And all, and all I'm saying is I agree that um, th it is difficult because things can go underground. But the 2007 law actually made very little difference in absolute numbers in terms of forced marriages. So they're actually still increasing. Oh. It has and made Salim, you have made that point. Let me ask you one question because you're an expert on this subject. Both of you are, of course. Is there anywhere in the world that you can point to and say, listen, that's what works. That sort of legislation works. Let's do that rather than, for example, criminalise this in the UK. Education and awareness needs to happen. Um, female genital um, mutilation was criminalised in 2003. N not one case has been to court. No young people have come forward and actually asked for help anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my fear is that, you know, if we criminalise forced marriage in its entirety, then that is what's going to happen Salim. to forced marriage. The victims can, are not going to come forward. Salim, They're going to fade can, away. Can it be enforced? And, uh, well, it can be to a certain no. extent. Well, because will it be? What, well, to a certain extent, what happens is that sometimes the police are unaware of the law. Or they're not sure how far they can go. Or so sometimes the CPS doesn't take, uh, take things to court because they feel that the law is not strong enough. So my hope is that if they do have stronger laws, then there will be unambiguous but sort of ways to do this. But the, 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 to answer to you, question earlier, um, the UK is actually ahead of most of the world in dealing with this problem, mm. so it's actually very difficult to point to other countries and say, well, they're doing this better, because actually mm. they're not. Uh, and the UK, to a, to a large extent, is leading the way on now, that. An emotive subject, guys. We're going to have to leave it there. We thank you very much indeed.